Hi, and thanks for joining me again today. Today we're going to be talking about psychic energy and social media. Psychic energy is projected through social media. And I'm sure I'm not the first person who has suggested that to you. And maybe you've already picked up on that yourself. Our phones and our electronic devices are little spirit boxes. They actually transmit any projected thought, feeling, memory, experience even that we have to the outside world. Now, depending on how many people are within our network of attachments is depending on how far that projection goes. But our psychic material does project via social media. Sometimes we're aware of it. Sometimes we know we're projecting our material. And sometimes we're not. Sometimes we are unconsciously projecting. At the beginning of the psychic awareness training, we talked a little bit about how projection is a form of psychic energy. Let's say that I am feeling insecure about myself. Maybe I feel like I'm not worthy of love because I wasn't invited to a wine tasting. Well, that's my projection of an experience that I had come through my field. It's not necessarily true. I might post on social media something that is slightly passive aggressive about being invited to events by my friends without even realizing or recognizing that the reason that I didn't get invited to the wine tasting is because I don't drink wine. We have our perception of reality and others have their perception of reality. Ultimately, neither one is actually universally true. It's an opinion. It's a subjective opinion. When we buy into the idea that our subjective opinions are universally true, that is when projection starts. We project what we think should be or what we think people should know about us. Sometimes we do it overtly, but sometimes it's covert and maybe even not visible to us. Think about why you are posting what you're posting. Are you looking to be seen, heard, and connected to? Is there a part of you that you're not seeing, hearing, or connecting to? Let's say you post a picture of yourself in a yoga pose, or perhaps you post a picture of yourself in an outfit that you think you look really great in. Do you really think you look great in it? Or are you looking for approval? Are you looking for validation from others because you don't believe that you are as adorable as you want to be? This is a normal response to insecurity. We all experience it. When we're trying to hone our psychic abilities, we need to be aware of this. Why are we posting what we're posting? What are we looking to get out of it? How are we using our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions to get a response from others? This is a psychic interaction. My photos, my captions may hit someone else's psychic feel and cause a reaction. And it might not be the reaction that I want. They might project their own insecurities onto me. And now we have a huge whopping misunderstanding. This happens more often than not. And it's why we need to be doing our work, coming clean, free of attachment, in order to be interdependent. If I really see myself as whole and complete, perfect just as I am, I do not need anyone to validate me. I do not need anyone to tell me I'm good enough, pretty enough, smart enough, thin enough, or any of those enoughs, because I know I am. I see myself. I'm doing the work to forgive myself for buying into misperceptions when I judge myself as bad or wrong or less than. This is what we need to do to be able to come attachment free. I often call this clean, coming clean, without an agenda, 
without any psychic manipulation. You see, when we are psychically attacked, it's based on projection. I don't actually think that people mean to psychically attack others most of the time. Most of the time, it's inadvertent or it's a a got you sort of situation. It's not actually something that we think can be damaging or harmful, but the reality is it can be. Our inadvertent psychic projection can cause psychological turmoil and we don't even know it's happening. Or maybe we do. Maybe we post something and then somebody else posts something. We feel their psychic reaction and internalize it based on our projection. We're not getting anywhere with this though. We're not actually making progress. Nobody is creating a deeper relationship this way. Partially because there's a lot of smoke and mirrors behind it. Partially because we're not being honest with ourselves and others. But overall, by and large, it's based on attachment and misperception. I invite you to look at social media in a different way. Rather than looking at someone who posts about Rumi and all of the wonderful ways that yoga has influenced their life, rather than thinking they are yogini of the year, ask yourself why they feel the need to post that. Somebody who's very secure with themselves, somebody who knows themselves, they don't need to post that stuff. Sometimes it's appropriate to connect with others on social media. This is where discernment comes into play. This is where we have to ask ourselves why we're doing what we're doing and be really brutally honest with ourselves. Earlier today, I posted on social media. I took a picture of an outdoor class that we are offering to the community. It was a lovely day for class, and there were plenty of people out on the field. And it really ignited a sense of pride in me as the studio owner for creating something out of nothing during a pandemic. But why did I post it? Did I post it to rub it in other people's faces that we have students and they don't? Did I post it to make myself feel better because our indoor classes aren't doing so well, but our outdoor classes are? Did I post it to justify us as a studio to let everybody know that people know who we are? I could have done it for any of those reasons without even knowing it. I believe that I did it to acknowledge the teacher who was teaching the class and to share with my very small private community how proud I am of where we've come. Perhaps there might have been something underneath it, but I do take psychic precautions. My social media accounts are private. I do not engage in social media interactions with people who are not in my close friend circle. I do not engage with people on social media who are my direct business competition. I do not allow them to follow me and I do not follow them. You might ask yourself, why? Don't you want to know what they're up to? No, it's none of my business. The only business I have is my business. Everybody else is trying to do their thing. If I take care of myself and come clean to my students and my friends and my people, then I'm doing my work. I have one studio owner who follows my Instagram. I support her and she supports me. When I see that she's doing well, I support her and I give her love. And when she sees that I'm doing well, she supports me and gives me love. That's how we work together without attachment. You see, her success does not mean that I'm less than. And my success does not mean that she is less than. In fact, our mutual success means that we are both uplifting collective consciousness, including each other. When we uplift on every level without discrimination, we really are working to change the world. I understand and I can feel when my competition or other studio owners aren't looking for my best interest. And it's okay. 
I don't judge them as bad or wrong. I'm just not going to engage with them. Recently, there was another studio owner in Austin that boasted about their programming. They were so excited that they had just been accredited on their social media post. They said they were the only program, and that just wasn't true. We had been accredited four months earlier. The difference between us and them is that we didn't feel the need to post anything when we got accredited. We were happy that we had accomplished that goal, but we didn't need anybody to see us or hear us. We were confident within our own experience. When they posted and projected that they were number one, that they were the only ones in Austin, I called them on it. I said, hey, let's be equitable. I have your best interest at heart. We expect you to have ours. The difference between me and them is that they don't have our best interest at heart because they aren't doing their work. They aren't recognizing their unconscious projected insecurities. Rather, they're just continuing to perpetuate the projection that they are putting out into the world. Maybe they know it. Maybe they don't. It's not for me to decide. All I can do is be responsible for my own energy. When I'm responsible for my own energy, I come clean. That doesn't mean I always like things, and that doesn't mean that I always agree with people, but I understand that my perception of the world is not universal. This is really how we work with people on a psychic level every single day. Think about all the colleagues or family members that you're friends with on social media. Think of all the passive-aggressive psychic interactions that you've had over the last month, six months, year. How many psychic interactions have you had on social media over the last decade? Probably more than you've had in-person interactions. We can feel it when somebody is projecting their psychic material. We know it's happening, and it is bait. It is bait, and it ignites our own material. We can either take the fire extinguisher out and work with our own fire, helping us to recognize our insecurities, our judgments, and our limiting beliefs, and release them so that we are coming clean free of attachment. Or we can fuel the fire, buy into those insecurities, and project our insecurities back onto others. This just creates a vicious cycle, and nobody wins. We are encouraging you to recognize when your material is activated. Stop, drop, and journal. Ask yourself why you feel the way you do. And then ask yourself if that is true. Forgive yourself for buying into the BS, the bad belief systems that are holding you back. Work with Pradipak Shabhavana, the comparison of opposite. Compare the perception that you have against the opposite. See if you can't neutralize your awareness. At the end of the day, know that every single interaction with everybody is an opportunity to further awaken into our enlightened state of being. It might be a psychic attack or it might be a psychic gift. It's your call.